Thank you for being with me today. Good morning. Good morning. You're very brave to come into the house of this big, scary criminal. You're very uh, brave. Why do you think so? Well, I don't think I'm a big, scary criminal. I was being a little bit sarcastic, but... Uh, I've, uh, I've understood. Yeah. But it's the most uh, debated case in Romania and maybe in, in this part of, uh, of Europe. How did you get into this? It's a really good question. Um, <laughs> that's a really good question. I think in life, if you shine bright, you cast a shadow. And I don't think that it would be an intelligent outlook to think that you can become one of the most known Googled people on the planet without there being some degree of opposing force which is going to try and damage your influence. So I think it's simply a side effect of my monumental success. It's not because I'm a bad person. It's not because I've done anything wrong. It's just what happens if you shine too brightly. This is what I believe. You've said this is a fabricated case. By whom? Yes, and I have to be careful because I'm inside of Romania. And I want to make it clear to the world that I don't blame Romania for this. This is not Romania's fault. However, when you reach a certain level of influence, there are people who are extremely interested, interested in trying to get you in trouble for something, regardless of whether the fact you've actually done anything wrong or not. And there are some extremely motivated individuals who are trying to damage my life, not because I'm a bad person, not because I'm guilty of anything, but purely because of my influence. So, Romanians? Well, it's, it's, it's a Romanian judicial system now, which I'm putting my faith in. I have faith in the judges to do the right thing. But ultimately, it's Romanian prosecutors and DCOT which decided to do this. But I don't think that all in all this is Romania's fault. I think that when you reach a certain height, Anywhere in the world, certain things can happen. That's what I truly believe. Who's your enemy? I don't know if I have enemies. I don't think it works that way. I think you just become, and it's not only me. I'm not the only person in the world who's ever gone through this. I don't think it's about enemies. I think it's about you become a target for very ambitious people. And it can work from the legal side and the criminal side of the world. If I'm an extremely wealthy, well-known person, I'm a target for a mafia gang or a robbery gang or criminals. And you can also be a target for a prosecutor or uh, someone else trying to make a career. So that's what happens when you become very large and you become very successful. I'm not the only person who suffered from this. I don't blame Romania for it. I have faith in the Romanian judicial system. I have faith in the judges to understand what's really happened and it all to be thrown away. I know what I've done and what I haven't done. God knows what I've done and what I haven't done. So I don't really think of it as enemies. I don't think these people are my enemies. I think you just become a large target at a certain level of influence, and that's the way the world works. It'd be very asinine and pretty childish for me to sit and think, I want to be extremely successful, and I want to have all these amazing things in my life, and I want to work very hard and everybody to know my name, and that's going to come with absolutely zero downside. I think that would be a pretty immature way to view the world. I think that there's balance, there's yin and yang, and there's a bunch of positives from fame and influence, and there's some negatives, and we've experienced some negatives, and all you can do is tell the truth and wait for the justice system to do its job. It was your choice to come to Romania. Correct. Why? I love Romania and I love Romanian people and I think that the Western world now is suffering massively and is in decline. And I think it's because they've adopted new think and woke ideologies which are destroying everything which is fundamental about the fabric of society. I think that Families are destroyed. I think that the education system is teaching children things they shouldn't know. I think that society is getting more dangerous. Crime rates increasing. Price of uh, living is increasing. I think that the Western world is suffering massively. And what I loved about Romania when I came here seven years ago is that it's quite traditionally conservative-minded. A lot of the woke insanity you'll see in America won't fly here, won't be accepted here. And I hope they stay that way. I hope Romania protects itself and protects its ideologies and stays a Christian country and makes sure that this new think, poisonous agenda, is not widely adopted. We'll see as things happen over time. But I loved Romania. I think it's a beautiful country. It's got beautiful nature. It's safe. It's a very safe place. I feel safe here. And I have nothing bad to say about it. The people have always been very friendly to me, very nice to me. I've never had any problems from Romania or with Romania ever. So uh, I came here to visit, and I just loved it. And I love the old-fashioned ideology of people. I kind of liked that about it. The world because I think in America now we have this new way of thinking 
and it's genuinely insanity. I think people are on the borderline of insanity. I've seen some statements made by you during time regarding Romania. Yeah. Have you thought back then when deciding to come to Romania that is maybe easier to rule here the world? Not at all. I mean, I, I made some statements, but I think a lot of them were taken out of context because I made very many long television shows. Sure. And it's been cut down to something small. It's normal. It's normal, yeah. And I, I talked about at length how I believe America is the most corrupt country in the world. And I believe that they start all the world's wars. And I believe that they're genuinely destructive. And anybody who understands what's happening right now in Ukraine understands how involved America is or understands what's happening in Niger understands how involved America is. And if you actually understand history and you analyze the world, you'll see every single conflict anywhere on the planet where anybody has ever died, ever, America's been involved. So I was talking about this at length, and somebody said to me, ah, but you say America's corrupt, you live in Romania. Romania's corrupt. And I said, yeah, well, maybe Romania's corrupt for small things, but we're not starting wars all around the world. But then they cut that piece and say, yeah, he said Romania's corrupt, and they try and show the judge and try and keep me in jail with it. And it's very disingenuous, and, and that's the thing about the whole legal process, is that when people are trying to put you in jail, they have no interest in playing fair. They're very disingenuous, and they try very hard to convince the populace and convince the world and convince a judge that you're a bad person by taking very small clips of things you've said and editing them all together and putting this big file together. But the truth is, Romanian news for a solid month, head to toe, was coverage of me and my brother saying we're bad people. It was my money gorilla, on repeat over and over again and here we are six or seven months later there are no videos of victims no evidence of anything no girls coming forward saying we've hurt them zero in fact the only girls they found are girls saying we're not victims we don't want to be victims decaught remove us from the victim file so i think over time people are starting to realize as the sensationalism dies down that if we had done these heinous crimes if we had done these bad things there would be some evidence of it and there's none um so yeah, I... Till, I, till the final proof, you're innocent. Well, I'd like to believe that, and I'd like for people at home to believe that, and I think people now do. I'm do you from, consider that in, in the public, uh, in, in, that the general public thinks that you are not actually? Yeah, I, 99% The of, ima image that was created around you? Yeah, I think... Or that you've created? 99% of people believe I'm innocent. I think everybody thinking believes I'm innocent. I think everybody thinking believes I'm innocent. Uh, the sensationalism at the beginning, which was purported by the media, was an attempt to slander our name, and it was also an attempt to find some disgruntled person who disliked us from the past to join this case, which didn't happen. You I think, know, but it's, it's an institution in Romania that is actually accusing you. It's normal for the media to, to try to, to explain that the accusations are of rape, yeah. of of outrageous, of yep. human trafficking, yep. of uh, creating an organized of crime. Of course. I, I, and I'm, I'm not mad at the media in any regard. I'm saying that at the beginning of the sensationalism, it's normal for people to sit, see all this on mm -hmm. the news and say, wow, maybe he's done something. But as time goes on and as there's no proof and as nothing comes out, people start to learn and realize that, okay, this was a media frenzy, as there should be, because it's an interesting case, right? Interesting case. Andrew, an, Amer uh, an American in Romania, is doing all these bad things. But I think most people know that we're completely innocent now, and I have faith in the judicial system to throw this away eventually. And you say innocent until proven guilty, which is why I said that's an interesting point, because... That's a normal point. Well, it's normal in democracies, but... And I must show respect to Romania, and I, and I want to make this point clear. I think that the Romanian judicial system actually, in many ways, does a very good job, because Romania is so safe. I walk around with a million dollar watch driving a five million dollar car and I don't have to worry too much about people with AK-47s turning up and robbing me. Whereas in London, I would have genuine concerns for my safety. I wouldn't be able to wear expensive watches or drive fast cars because London is now so dangerous that you have to hide all of your wealth. But the reason for that is because the British justice system truly believes in innocent until proven guilty, so you're judged in absolute freedom. And in Romania, you're not. My brother and I spent 92 days in jail, six months on house arrest, all of our money taken, all of our things frozen, all of our cars gone. To say innocent until proven guilty, well, we've already been very severely punished and we're continuing to be severely punished. Now I can't leave book arrest, okay. So I'm still being punished. So in the Romanian system, it's not truly innocent until proven guilty because the process is a punishment 
and we're going through this process being heavily punished, and at the end, by the time we're proven innocent, okay, fine. We've already done jail time. We've already been on house arrest. We've already lost all our money. We've already lost all our cars. We've already lost everything. So it's different, but, and this is the thing where you have to be an extremely logical person, I then analyze and say, okay, well, in England, they won't do that. In England, you are truly innocent until guilty, but then you have to fear the criminals on the streets. So it's almost like a balance, right? Do you want to fear the law or fear the criminals? And if I had to be honest, I actually respect Romania for keeping the streets so safe. I think it would be immature for me to live here for so many years and enjoy the safety and then complain about how the judicial system preserves the safety of society. So I guess you just have to take the rough with the smooth. I guess that's how it goes. We were discussing about uh, the accusations. Yeah. Rape, yeah. human trafficking, yeah. organizing a, a crime um, group. group, exactly. I have to look into your eyes and ask you, have you ever raped someone? I have no need to rape anybody. And that's the thing that I think is uh, pretty pertinently clear to the people at home. The rape was actually thrown out very early. I think it was in my first 30 days it was thrown out because there's no evidence at all of it. It's just an accusation. So the rape was already thrown out. I have no need to rape anybody. I have no desire to rape anybody. And another thing I've actually realized through this whole process, I don't know of many Romanians, I don't think this is a phenomenon that happens so often in Romania, but in America, England, and these countries, rich, successful men being falsely accused of rape happens every day. I don't think in Romania, when a rich, successful man is accused of rape, do people realize that they're like, oh, this is unusual, this is, a, this is a problem. But in England, this happens hundreds of times a week. Every footballer, every, every rapper, every movie star, anyone who's successful and rich gets accused of these things, and the population is far more likely to say, okay, whatever, because it happens all the time. It's an unfortunate side effect of being a wealthy, successful man. Ronaldo, during the World Cup, during the last World Cup, had five accusations of rape. He's, so trying to, he's trying to play the World Cup and five girls appear saying he raped them years ago. It's just unfortunate and it's something so that it's happens. So it's only about man, money, Andrew? It's I, only about money? I don't think it's only about money, but when you're a very successful man and you're financially successful and a woman can't get the money from you she wants, it's very likely or it's very, it's very common, unfortunately, in the West for them to then accuse you of rape or to say, well, at the time I wanted to be with him and I loved him and we had consensual sex, but now that he won't buy me handbags, I have now decided I didn't want to be with him and now it's rape. Was this your case? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, completely. If I wasn't a successful person, none of this would have happened. Did a woman ask for handbags and she didn't she asked for a lot more than receive? handbags and she was declined. And, and then all of a sudden she was raped. And it's, it's scary because in the Western world now, as a man, it's very difficult to protect yourself. Like, it's very scary if you're a man and a woman decides she wants to go on this vengeance path. How do you protect yourself? I mean, at the time, everything's consensual. At the time, you're a couple. At the time, everything is perfect. And then, retrospectively, she changes her mind in an attempt to destroy your life. Like I said, we can look now. There was a very famous footballer in England who recently just got uh, released non-guilty. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Like, this is a big thing that happens all the time. And I think in Romania, it hasn't quite started to happen yet. Thank God. But that makes a judge more concerned. A judge is like, wow, okay, a rape accusation. Let's look at this. Whereas if the judge was seeing 100 fake rape accusations a week, they'd be far quicker to say, okay, there's no evidence to dismiss. So I guess... What I'm about human trafficking? <laughs> yeah, human trafficking for, make, for TikTok. And that's another thing, right? You say human trafficking, you imagine people being tied up, chained, moved across borders, forced to, to do sexual work. Convinced. My, convinced. Might be. Yeah. Is this the case? No, my accusation is that... Firstly, I don't understand how I can human traffic people from Bucharest. I mean, the two girls I'm accused of human trafficking are Romanians who've lived here their whole lives. They haven't gone anywhere. Traveled where? <laughs> so, so that's the first thing that makes no sense at all. Secondly, they're saying I forced them... Maybe going on the internet? Mm. Well, I think for human trafficking, you have to transport somebody. These are people who are Romanian, born in Romania, and are still in Romania. So it doesn't even make any sense. It's certainly a reach. Uh, it's, it's pretty desperate by the prosecution. They're trying to say that I told these girls how to make TikTok videos, and I forced them to. Did you? Well, no. I, I gave advice on how to become famous on social media because I'm famous on social media. I know. Uh, so everybody, wants, everybody, everybody, everybody wants, wants advice, right? <laughs> so women come to me, men come to me. I, I said to the judge, I can give you examples of 100 men who I told what time to post on TikTok and what time to get famous on social media. Men and women come to me. 
And they're saying I did this for financial gain, but there's not a single shred of financials in the file. They haven't shown one lay, one dollar that I've made from this. I was simply giving advice. And what happened was I, they attacked me. They threw me in a jail cell. They tried very hard to find something real. Something real didn't exist. So they are forced to charge me with what they have. And what they have is that I've helped two of my friends get famous on TikTok. And those two girls are saying we're not victims. I will stop you for a second, just to tell me how was in the prison. I have to be fair to Romania, and I have to be fair that the guards were very professional. And I also think the guards were actually quite apologetic to me. The whole system, every police officer I interacted with, everybody had a degree of sorry. They were like, we're sorry, bro. Like, we're just doing our jobs. And I was like, I know, and I respect you, and you're just doing your job. But everybody understood I didn't belong there. Nobody from the beginning believed I was guilty. I wasn't treated hard like a criminal. They were professional, and they did their jobs. But everybody understood, really, what's happening. Did and that period change you? It did change me. Or your brother? Yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty resilient individuals. And I believe God is the best of planners. And if he decided I needed a little bit of jail, then I will do a little bit of jail. I, and if he decides I need more, then I guess there's not much I can do about it. I'm not going to run away from this. I'm here to clear my name. I'm going to go through the entire pro process. I do think you learn a lot about yourself and a lot about other people, certainly. But there's not things you don't already know. It just confirms some things that you knew and you needed to be reminded of. Maybe a little bit of jail is good for a man. I'm not sure. I think men are designed to struggle. We're designed to go through hardship. I think life as a man is all about having bad things happen to you and get good at dealing with those bad things. And for a while, I had a pretty good life. You know, it's, I, I had a very difficult upbringing, a very hard life. And then I had this two or three year period of lots of money and flying around on private jets and everything was going pretty good. And, and from that to, to, jail. Handcuff, to handcuffs first. Absolutely. And uh, that's... Did that scare you in that very moment. I don't operate in the realm of fear. It didn't scare me. It was... You don't have any fears. It, no, it's not. I don't operate in that realm. I don't, I don't think fear is a healthy attitude for me to have in those situations. I think that God, dis there's yin and yang in the universe. There's light and dark and God decided to give me a test. And it's very difficult for me to sit on the internet and say that I am top G and talk all these things about mental resilience and talk about men's mental health and helping men and talk about how strong my mind is and God not test me. God said, okay, you've told the world how strong your mind is. Let's see how strong your mind is and let's put you in jail. The scariest thing about going to jail is you don't know how long you're there. I mean, it was very scary for me. I think my experience is more scary than the typical Romanians because I'm going to a jail in a country where I don't speak the language. I'm getting paperwork I don't understand. I don't know why I'm there. It's two weeks because I got arrested on New Year's Eve and there was time with translations and time off and people were busy. It was two weeks before I even got my accusation in English before I realized what complete garbage it was. So I'm initially just thrown in jail, and they're saying, ah, human trafficking. I'm like, human trafficking who? When? What? What is this? This is garbage. And they're like, oh, well, you have to wait for the papers. Two weeks later, I read them, realize it's completely insane. And then each 30 days, I keep getting sent back. I didn't understand how and why that was happening. So it's scary. Am I going to be here forever? Am I going to be here for years? What's going on? But... All you can do is take it day at a time, and it's important that you have, as a man, a strong body so other people don't pick on you, and a strong mind so you don't pick on yourself. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have those two things, and I also have my brother, who I love very much. And we shook hands and said, it doesn't matter if we're here for 10 years or 10 more days, it doesn't matter, we're, we're a team, and we're going to handle this like men. And we never for a second considered doing anything crazy or running away or getting mad at Romania or being children. It's just part of life, unfortunately, and you have to go through it. How much money do you have? <laughs> Officially, DCOT have everything. I'm poor. <laughs> um, Are you I, the richest man in Romania? I, um, as it is said. I don't know. I, I know that. But you know how much money do you have? For I'm, me, it's simple. I'm just checking my accounts and see exactly how much money I have. Well, that's the thing that's interesting, right? Because they say, there's a saying in English, if you know what you have, then you don't have much. That's mm -hmm. what they say, because at certain levels, at certain echelons of income and finance, you don't know what you have. Let's imagine I have property. I don't know exactly what is valued now. I have shares in companies. I haven't checked the value. I have crypto. I don't know how much that's worth. I have cash. Do you still have crypto? They've seized. Of course not. No. Um. <laughs> Explain to me, please. 
I, I don't know uh, too much about uh, cryptos, but it's kind of difficult to seize some cryptos, well, right? Well, Decart have taken some. <clears throat> I'm sorry, all. How? Because it was on an exchange, mm -hmm. so they took it. So Decart has seized about 15 million euro, I think, from me, and that's their prerogative. I mean, from my understanding, the legal precedent is that when they take your money, the reason they take your money is because they've proved you've made illegal money. Mm -hmm. In my file, there's no transactions of any money. So they've taken 15 million euro, and they said I made that criminally, but they have not shown where one lay was made criminally. So I, I believe I should get all my things back. I don't understand how they can remain seized. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I, I'm financially successful. I think that is the male prerogative to become as financially successful as possible. I don't think that being financially successful makes you a bad person. I don't think it makes you I evil. didn't say that, uh, but I yeah. was just curious about how much money do you have? I don't know. If you, if you know exactly, if you know if you're the richest person in Romania, I doubt, like I'm, I, doubt, I, think, I think Romania has a lot of very rich people who are a lot more quiet than I am. And I am. And they were not in jail. And they were not in jail, that's right. And I, like I said, when you shine bright, you cast a shadow. And I was very aware for a very long time that I am very open about my wealth and very open about my lifestyle. That comes with some benefits, but that also comes with some detriment. I could have been much quieter. I understand that. And when I do that, when I'm open and loud with my lifestyle, I'm not doing it to try and upset anybody. I'm actually trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to inspire people because I am now one of the most influential men on the planet and all the young men of the world are very interested in me and they follow my words. Is it good or is it bad? I think it's good. I think it's good because I have a platform now and I try and inspire hard work and diligence and discipline in all of the young men who watch me. I know I, you, you, you are watching also the debates um, on the internet. A lot of persons are saying that it is bad, that I, you are a bad influence. I'm, I'm sure there are. And I, it's very difficult to have 100% of people like you. I don't like 100% of people. So <laughs> why do I expect 100% of people to like me? That's fine, but I know what I'm teaching. I'm teaching discipline and I'm teaching these young boys to go to the gym, work hard, go to school, listen to their parents, do as they're told, follow God, reject pornography and don't play video games all day and reject all this insanity woke think and to get as rich as possible because the male imperative is to move the world with money and be financially successful. And the reason I show my wealth is because it inspires young boys. If you're 16 or 17 years old, they're inspired by me because my wealth is so obviously it's so obvious, right? I show it. But it's actually impossible for all of them to become you. Well, and if I can, and, and, and you're right, but when you inspire, it's like having a fight gym, right? If I had a fight gym and I was teaching 100 students, only a few would be world champions, and the rest perhaps wouldn't, but they would still be in better shape. They'd be better physical condition to be able to fight better than if they didn't go at all. So I think I have a huge platform and I'm very beneficial. I, I have huge ability to benefit the world. I'm grateful for that. And I think I can do a massively positive thing. And I think that I inspire the world. And yeah, I could have been a lot more quiet. But I, I have some money. I mean, I'm successful. Some? I have some money, yeah. I have a little bit. I'm successful. And I think, and I work hard all day, every day. I don't drink. I don't gamble. I don't take drugs. All I do is work. And I think if you're a man who is capable and diligent and you dedicate your entire life to work, you're going to end up with some money. I will ask you a personal question. Sure. Is your mom worried about your situation now? Well, mothers worry. I know. And yeah, and she does worry, but she knows she has a very strong son and she knows that I've never had an easy life. I don't come from a rich family. I think maybe some people misunderstood this. They think that me and Tristan are rich boys from a rich family and throw us in jail and we're going to panic. And we're from homeless shelters and we're from the worst area of Luton. We're from the worst area of the worst town in England, which is far more dangerous than Bucharest ever ever has been to us. We're from the streets, effectively, and we grew up very hard. And she knows that we are made for difficult situations, and she has faith in her capabilities of her sons. And I think that's also a fantastic thing for a mother to have, to look at her sons and go, wow, at least they're, you know, men. So she's worried, but she knows that we're capable. Did she ask you if you raped someone? Oh, of course not, because she knows it's a lie. And that's another thing that's interesting. I think. Everyone in the Western world who's more exposed to these false accusations that rich men get were much quicker to know this was a lie. Like, I, don't, I can't keep my pulse on the Romanian populace like I can in the English-speaking world, but the second it came out, everyone in America was like, another one, another lie, another liar. I mean, if I'm a big man, and I'm a professional athlete, 
and I'm a kickboxing world champion. If I raped someone, there'd be medical records, there'd be a bruise, there'd be a mark. Once again, that's not in the file. None of this exists. So this is just a, it's an attempt to slander my name. And I guess what I have to do is see it as a litmus test. Whereas there are a certain degree of the population who are going to believe it no matter what you tell them because the news told them. And there's a certain degree of the population who's going to sit there and go, wait, they 